Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will speak through this message, Lord, today. That you will show us, Lord, more and more about your word, about believing your word, and doing your word, because that is the way that you can see if we really do love you, and if we really do believe you. is if we obey you and obey what you tell us to do in your word and in our hearts. Let us really get this deep down in our heart today, Lord, because if we're professing anything about knowing you and loving you, but are not following your word, are not obeying your word, then you tell us in your word that person is a liar. So we all want to be true to you, Father. True to what your word says. And be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. In Jesus' name, amen. The name of this devotional today, A Sure Sign, We Believe and Love the Lord. A Sure Sign, We Believe and Love the Lord. This is by J.R. Miller, one of those men of old. And, and what is that sure sign? How many times does the Lord tell us in his word, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And it's not just a few either. There's many sayings. There's many commandments in his word. But the thing is, it's not something that should be grievous to us. If we are really a born-again believer, truly have the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, a true salvation, truly have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, He tells us He's going to write these things upon our heart. And if they're written on our heart, they are part of us. They're not going to be grievous to do them. It's going to be part of our life. But it's another thing if we want to go our own way, have our own way, be in our own fleshly way, and mindset and everything else. Yeah, that would be grievous. To that kind of person to keep the commandments of God. It doesn't work that way. And it should not be that way in a true believer's life because it is just something that comes so flowing when we have the true Spirit of God and He writes those things on our hearts. I remember. Many, many years ago when the Lord was teaching us about this. And we had our business at the time. And there would come days. We would always work on Saturday. But as the Lord was teaching us about this. And about his commandments. And about writing these things on our heart. Saturday would come and we could not do one bit of work at all. 
no matter how hard we tried. We just had the unction and the desire to go sit down, read our word, get into prayer and worship. Even before we knew about the Sabbath day. The Lord was writing that on our heart. It was just coming naturally to us to keep the Sabbath day holy. That's what I'm talking about. It's not something you have to just say, Oh, I got to do this. I got it. No, if you're doing that, something's not right. It's not right. Because the Lord said they're not grievous to bear. Obviously, they're not written on your heart if that's the case. And you need to cry out to God. Father, write your word on my heart. Write your commandments on my heart. Let it be part of my being. So that I walk in your truth. And I hear your truth. And I do what you say. Psalm. I'm going to read this first, and I want you to think about this first. Do you believe this verse? And do you do this verse? Is this you? Is this your life? Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. As I'm reading this, I can just envision walking on the path of the Lord, and this bright light is shining. The way before me. On my path. That's what the word of God is. That's what it should be. In everyone that is professing to be the Lord's. It should be that way in their life. When we read the word. Are our eyes open to see things we did not see before? Is it alive? Or is it just a dead letter to us? Because if it's a dead letter to us, there is something wrong in the heart. And that person needs to get on their knees and cry out to God to cleanse or whatever. You know, and you can't walk in known sin, blatant known sin, and expect to be comfortable. If you're a true child of God, it's not going to happen. God's going to bring conviction on you. A trembling conviction that you're doing wrong. And that's going to be there till you repent. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Does God's word illuminate us? Is it alive to us? Is something well up in our heart when we read it and know it to be the truth? It's a lifeline. It's direction. It's instruction on how we should walk this walk. It's an instruction book, a love letter from our Father to us. John thirteen seventeen. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. The things that Jesus showed his disciples, washing their feet, 
being a servant to each other, helping each other, showing them the way to walk. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Now, if you're a true believer and you know the right thing to do and you just deliberately don't do it, I don't think you're happy. But if you do what you know is the right thing to do and all these other things Jesus says, then there brings a happiness in our hearts about it. But disobedience does not bring happiness at all. And we all know when we're being, we are being disobedient to the Lord's word and to what he has said in our hearts. We all know that. True believers know that. A man is not happy because he knows much, but because he receives much of the divine nature and is in all his conduct conformed to the divine will of God. That's where it's at, y'all, right there. Knowing we are in and doing the divine will of God, that brings happiness and joy into our heart. Resisting God and resisting His word and resisting His voice does not bring happiness. Let's go over to John 13. I want to start with verse 12 here. So after he had washed their feet, Jesus, and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Listen. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. See, he's given example. He did that all through the time he walked on this earth. For I have given you an example. See, that's what the scriptures are to us. An example. Jesus, in his life, gave us examples. Even the warnings that are given in the word are an example to us. Hey, don't go that way. Don't do that. Because if you do, this is going to happen. And this is what he said. For I have given you an example. That ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. And then John thirteen seventeen, If ye know these things, okay, you know them, but don't do them. You're not going to be happy. But if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Jesus said that, y'all. And then he proceeded to say, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. See, Jesus knows his own. Oh, yes, he does. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. 
Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. It's pretty plain, isn't it? Pretty plain. Jesus knew who was going to betray him. Even in that close of relationship, there was a betrayer. And so there are today. But betrayers need to check out about Judas and what his end was. And Judas is in hell today. Make no mistake about it. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. So if we obey the Lord and do what he's saying, doing what he said was an example for us to do in his word. And there's many things. Happy are ye if you do them. That's the Master's example. His great humility. He does expect to be regarded as our Master and our Lord. The thing is, and the question is, do we treat him that way in our own life that he's master and lord of our life and that means over everything do we do that we must be willing to obey him as a soldier that obeys his commanding officer because he is our commanding officer the highest officer Even when that order that he gives conflicts with our comfort or our convenience or our safety. We must also do for each other in our poor measure what he has done for us. Taking on us the form and the work of a slave. It's only when we have stooped to the simplest and lowest humility that we're able to lift our brethren to a purer and nobler life. Let us watch over each other's souls as those who must give an account to God. You think about it. What sorrow must have constantly weighed on our Savior's heart in knowing that all his love and all his care would be resisted by Judas, the betrayer. As the rock in a garden Refuse a flower garden refuses to respond to the influences of spring to lift up the heel is to kick in brutal malice but Jesus saw that treachery he foresaw it And he told his disciples. (laughs) 
and when it took place as predicted by Jesus. They knew everything Jesus told them and everything he had declared himself to be. They knew the truth. Jesus never lied. He never tried to deceive. He is the total embodiment of truth. Hallelujah. It's very necessary to read the Bible. Not just to know the will of God, but that we may do it. Not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. If scripture is not the practice of our life, then it's nothing to us. We can read it all day long. We can know the commandments all day long. We can read all day long what Jesus said. But if we are not doing it, it's nothing. It means nothing. Its truths are to be applied. See, the word stands no matter what. It's true no matter what. If a person hears it, but they're not doing it. It's still true. It's still going to stand whether they do it or not. But they're just showing they don't really love the Lord as they profess. Because that's what he said. Its truths are to be applied. If we read the Beatitudes... And go read the Beatitudes today. Matthew 5, 2 through 12. We are to compare ourselves with their divine requirements and seek to be conformed to them. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. If we come upon a verse that rebukes any habit or sin of ours, we are immediately to make the needed amendment. Reading the Word of God, and boy, the Lord just lets that thing jump right out at you. He's just pinning you to the wall with it. Don't resist. Do not resist the Holy Spirit. When he brings conviction, fall to your knees in repentance. Because this is the day, harden not your heart. That's what he said, don't harden your heart. And when you resist that conviction, that's you're going to harden your heart. You're going to get a hard heart. And you're not going to be able to see or feel When the Lord comes knocking, when he brings conviction, you better pay attention and fall to your knees immediately before the Holy God. We are to accept its promises, the Bible. Believe them. And then act as believing them. We are to allow its comforts to enter our hearts and support us in sorrow. You know, reading through the Psalms when you have a heavy heart or grief or sorrow, the Lord just comforts. His word comforts. It's like the balm of Gilead putting over our hearts 
His word is alive. It's real. It's truth. That's what it should be to us. There is nothing written in the Bible just for show, for just an ornament or something like that. No. Every word is practical and truth. There is no truth in Scripture which has not some bearing upon actual living. This is instruction on how we are to live as a true born again believer when we come to it and we're eager to know how to live for the Lord and we're ready to obey its precepts we will find it opening up in its inmost meaning to us, in in revelation of what things mean. And really, you can go back to the same verse, and he'll give even a deeper revelation about what it means. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Okay? John 14, 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Okay? Now, That should not need any interpretation at all by anyone that is listening to this. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Keep my precepts, what I have told you in my word. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. He's talking to his disciples, fixing to leave this world and go to the Father. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Forever. Even the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of truth. Not of lies. But of truth. For he dwelleth with you. And shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him And will manifest myself to him. That's Jesus. Of your regard. 
for the Lord. If ye love me, as ye profess to do, keep my commandments. And he says, if you don't, you say you love me, but you're not keeping my commandments. Not at all. Then you're a liar. You don't really love me. Now see, Jesus, I'm paraphrasing that, but that's what he said. We don't want to just be a professor. We want it to be real in our life. Real in our heart. And I pray the Father. Yeah. Send the Holy Spirit. There's to be a steady obedience to His commands. And I want to read these verses right here. John fifteen seven. Now this is one of those verses with an if. Okay? In other words, if you do what he's saying here. This is Jesus speaking. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? And then 1 John 3.22 And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight okay said he would send the comforter that's the Holy Spirit the advocate the monitor the encourager the intercessor that he may abide with us forever that's just beautiful isn't it first John Two, three, and four. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Now, what is that saying there? If we are not keeping his commandments, his word, his sayings, then we don't know him. No matter if we say we know him or not. We don't know him. If we are not keeping his commandments. And once again, it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. What a person wants more. They want the world. Worldliness. Or they want the Lord. In the way of the Lord. And walking in his way. And having true joy and peace and happiness. 1 John 2, 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. 1 John 2, 4. He that saith I know him. 
and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. That's pretty powerful punch right there, isn't it? And hereby do we know that we know him. We do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. This is verse 5, 1 John 2, 5. And verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Now, here's the question. Are we walking in our life as Jesus walked? Hereby we know that we truly and savingly know him as he is the advocate, the righteous one if we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. The Nicolaitans and the Gnostics, notwithstanding, they lived in a habitual course of the most criminal, sensual indulgences, boasted that they were the objects of God's love and sure of obtaining eternal life, merely because they possessed the knowledge of of the true God and of his mercy in forgiving men's sins well in this boasting they made the apostle declared them liars because that's not the way it works And this is something very serious. What they were saying, they had head knowledge, but their life didn't show it no more than a man in the moon. Showed just the opposite, who their father was. And it certainly wasn't the Lord. False believers. I've already read you several times what the Lord says here. Those that really know Him and really love Him keep His commandments. But whoso keepeth His word sincerely endeavors to live in obedience to all His commands in him verily is the love of God. You know, the Lord is so good to just bring out such wonderful truths. You definitely don't want to fool yourself in this hour thinking you're right with the Lord and you're really not. You just got head knowledge. You don't have it, it in the heart. You got to have him in your heart. And have repented truly of your sins. Been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. To be a true believer and on your way to heaven. 
And if you just know about him, and it's not in the heart, get on your knees. Cry out to the Lord to truly save you and truly cleanse you. Repent of your sins before a holy God. There are no guarantees of tomorrow. Not one single guarantee in anybody's life of tomorrow. Now's the day. Let's all ask ourselves these questions today. Do we truly believe His Word? Do we truly love Him? It's going to show. And what we do in our actions is going to show what's in our heart and what we truly believe. So today, let's walk in the way and the steps of the Lord. Believe His Word. Keep His Word. Love his word and love him and love each other in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>